everybody, this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here, and welcome back. This is our series on the Acts of the Holy Spirit, where we're going deep into the first few chapters of the book of Acts, because I believe God wants us to have a proper understanding of the foundation of how Acts began to happen and how the Acts of the Lord, the Acts of the Apostles began to manifest. And we need to understand the foundation. And today is episode six, and I want to talk to you about supernatural boldness and leadership. I believe leaders need to be bold. If you are bold and brave, then you will be like Joshua. What did God say to Joshua? He said, did I not command you to be courageous and to be strong? Have I not commanded you? For as I was with Moses, I will be with you. You see, many times if you want to pioneer or step up to the plate, it makes you exposed. It makes you vulnerable. It puts you in a place where you will be seen before all. And many times to be in a place of leadership is a place where you're pioneering and you're doing things that you don't know what to do. You don't know how to do it. You just know that God has called you to it. And if God's called you to it, then his grace will be there so, so you can succeed. That's why God commanded Joshua, said, be strong and be courageous. And that's what leadership is today. We need leaders that are strong, bold, brave, and courageous. Not people that will just take it from the government, take it from tyranny, just be enslaved and say, yes, we should teach kids about transgenderism. Yes, we should allow people to be sexually abusing our kids like pedophiles with Disney and Disneyland. No, we have to draw the line and we have to be bold and speak out because we are the church of Jesus Christ. So I believe God is raising up bold leaders. God is raising up bold leaders from different ethnies, minority groups, different backgrounds. God is raising up bold leadership because that's what Christianity is all about. The kingdom of heaven advances by those who take it by force, not by people who lily-dally and want to be comfortable and play it safe. The greater the risk, the greater the reward. And let me tell you, because Jesus is a very great reward, that's why we take risks with God. There really is no risk taken with the Lord because we've counted at all a joy. Today I want to talk to you about supernatural boldness in leadership because what the American church is lacking is bold leaders. You may have Leaders that understand the Bible or theology, they've gone to the best seminaries. But do you have a leader that is bold and courageous to not only speak out the truth, but actually obey God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength? Let's go to the Word of God here. Acts chapter 2. The Bible here says in verse 14, Acts 2, 14. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Yerushalayim, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. In the last day this shall be, God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So good. Bold leadership is inspired by God. You see, boldness is not an act of courage. It's not something you put on, but boldness is something that flows. It's something that comes through you. It's something that comes through the infilling. You see this progression. First, Peter and the apostles, they were filled in the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the upper room. And then as people were mocking and taunting and speaking evil and blaspheming the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden, Peter arose. Peter rose up and said, enough is enough. Peter rose up in the might of the Lord and he took a stand. And as he took a stand, he began to address the crowd under the unction, under the anointing of the Lord. So many people want to be leaders, but did God select you? So many people want to be leaders, but are you called or are you chosen? So many people want to be leaders, but is it God who's causing you to rise up and there is an unstoppable momentum? Or is it your flesh because you want to be seen and you want to be known? Too many people think that leadership in church is about a stage and about a mic. 
I'm sorry. Leadership is about a towel and a basin. Leadership is about understanding the opportune time and stepping up to the plate when nobody else wants to. Are you serving when nobody sees? Are you willing to do the things that nobody wants to do? Are you willing to clean the toilets? Are you willing to mop the floor? Are you willing to stay later and over the hours? Even when people leave, are you willing to stay to help clean up the church or to help clean up the premises? God is looking for people with a pure heart motive and is looking for people with servant attitudes. But we need bold leadership today. We need people who will speak up, speak out. We need people who will address the crowd. Many people say, Pastor Ben, why do you address certain things? Why do you say certain things? If only you didn't say certain things, maybe you'd be a better representation of Jesus to others. Oh, people are offended that you like to go hunting. People are offended that you believe that President Trump is God's choice, not Biden. People are offended that you talk so boldly about abortion and so boldly about uh, transgenderism and homosexuality and you speak so boldly about things. People are offended by that, Pastor Ben. And I say, well, you know what? The Bible here says Peter rose up and he addressed the crowd. He put them to shame. He spoke to them. He spoke against that spirit. Because we're not speaking to people. We're speaking to spiritual entities. And the Bible here says that Peter rose up in boldness. He rose up. And it's not that he was smart or wise in himself. But God anointed him in that moment. You have to ask the question, is God leading you? If God is leading you, then it will be unstoppable. If God has anointed you, then it will be evidential. It will be so tangible, so visible that it will be undeniable. And I love the story because this is a story of redemption. No leader is perfect. No man, no woman, no person is perfect. This is a story of redemption. Because days before, here's Peter. He betrays Jesus. At the sign of the rooster crowing, Cock -a -da 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 -da! Peter, you will betray me three times. This is a story of redemption. Peter betrayed the Lord. Peter himself said, I will never betray you. I will never do that. And, Peter, and Jesus said to Peter, before the cock, before the rooster crows, you will three times. And after Peter betrayed the Lord, he felt so down and discouraged. And of course, even Judas betrayed the Lord. So did all the other disciples. Judas hung himself. And Peter went into lamenting and remorse. And we see in John 21 where Peter went back to fishing. I love that passage. I love that verse. He went back to fishing. And Jesus stood on the shore and said, throw the net on the other side, on the right side. Are you ready to throw the net on the right side? Are you ready for a great catch, for a great harvest? And it was then that Peter saw the Lord again. <gasps> it's the Lord. They saw Jesus at the harvest. So people will see the Lord on your life when they see blessings and harvest on your life. Some people are not seeing Jesus because they're not seeing you have a harvest. That's another word for another time. I believe I've preached on that many times before. But this is a story of redemption because Peter was a failed friend. Peter let Jesus down. When Jesus needed Peter the most, where was he at? He scattered. He ran away. He did not stand up for Jesus at that time. Peter did not stand up for Jesus, but he actually ran away in fear, like a scared little schoolboy. And Peter ran away. Of course, the Bible says that Jesus walked with the people for 40 days after resurrection and after 40 days he ascended. But during those 40 days and in the 10 days in the upper room, in the birthing room of the birthing chamber, as Peter as Peter and the other 120, they were pressing in until the promise was released. And as Peter was pressing in, all of a sudden, bam, he's the God of the second chances. He's the God of the 
turnaround. He is the God of redemption. All of a sudden, Peter went from a failed friend to a bold leader. Peter went from running away to standing up. Peter went from being afraid to becoming bold. Peter went from being a weakling to becoming strong. Peter shifted and truly Jesus said, upon this rock, Peter, I will build my church. And that's what God did. God did it with Peter. You may have felt like you failed Jesus. You may have felt like you failed the Lord. You are a failure. You messed up many times. You've sinned in your own self. Oh, Rabbi Kedab, you will never be used. You will never be usable by God again. I know the church Christians have tried to stone you to death. But here's Peter. He rose up in the power of the Lord. And it was undeniable. He rose up in boldness. He rose up with supernatural courage. He rose up by the unction of God and he began to speak out and he addressed them. The Bible here says in Acts chapter 2, verse 14, but Peter standing, number one, and he lifted up his voice, number two, and addressed them, number three. He stood up, he lifted up his voice, and he addressed them. Are you ready to take a stand? Are you ready to lift up your voice? Because the enemy wants to kill your voice. Masks, COVID-19, the devil is a liar. The enemy wants to stifle your voice with a python spirit. He wants to snuff out the voice of the prophets by the spirit of Jezebel. But your voice is powerful. Your word is powerful because your voice is the voice of God. And there is a rhema. There is the breath of the Ruach Kodesh in your voice. The Bible says God spoke. Let there be light. Let your voice be heard. You need to speak. Let there be light. And Peter stood up and he spoke and he addressed the crowd. We need fathers and mothers that will address pedophilia. We need fathers and mothers that will address sexuality. We need fathers and mothers that will address the PC culture. We need fathers to teach boys how to be boys. We need mothers to teach girls how to be girls. We need men and women of God to address the nonsense of the day. Oh, you devil. Oh, we call it as it is. You fraud Fauci. Oh, CNN, you're going down. Oh, Facebook Meta, you're going down. Jeff Bozos. Oh, Bezos Twitter, you're going down. It's a switch. It's a turnaround. Let the Peters arise. Let the bold leaders arise. Let the pebbles from Petrus to Petrus to the rock. You're going to go from the pebble to the rock. Let the Peters arise. Let there be a new generation of Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit filled leaders that are going to take a stand and speak out for what's right on the issues of the heart of God. Let the Peters arise. You may have felt like you failed, but God will use you again. God will use you again. You may have failed like Peter, but God is not done with you yet. Where are the bold leaders? When COVID-19 happened, so much of the church closed down. And I'm not shaming you if you did, if you were a pastor. I understand the politics, the difficulties. I understand. However, let the Peters arise. I will not take your tyranny. I will not drink the Kool-Aid. I will not believe in your lies. We are the church of Jesus Christ. This is where the line is being drawn. And I will take a stand for my faith, for what the Bible, the Word of God says. And Paul, and Apostle Peter, excuse me, addressed the crowd. That's why I, a lot of times I address my haters. I address the haters. I address the critics. It's not my job to put out every fire, but it is my job to start a fire. And Peter rose up. I believe there's supernatural boldness coming upon leaders and leadership today. There's new mantles of leadership, mantles of boldness and courage and strength coming upon the church. Have I not commanded you, Joshua? Be bold, and be courageous, be strong and be courageous. 
Every giant that comes up against you, every enemy that comes up against you, I will slay. Every word curse, allegation, accusation, every lie, I will bind, I will break, I will deal with it. For God will fight for you. All you have to do is watch. God is for you. So who can be against you? Let the Peters arise. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail. And Peter rose up. And he began to preach the gospel, the good news. Hallelujah. And the Bible here says that 3,000 souls believed in what Peter said. Acts 2.41 So those who received his word were baptized. And they were added that day about 3,000 souls. True, brave, bold leadership saves souls. Is not afraid to preach the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of Jesus Christ, first for the Jews, then for the Gentiles. It's the power of God. You want to see demonstration? Preach the gospel. You want to see God move? Preach the gospel. 3,000 souls were saved. Show me the fruit of your life. You say you're a leader? How many souls have you brought to Jesus? You say you're a leader, but you're too busy bickering and fighting about who has bigger crowds, who has better social media. Show me the souls that you've saved and brought to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the Peters arise. God will use you. God will use you. Doesn't matter how many times you've failed, how many times you've fallen. God will use you. I believe there's an unusual grace for leadership and boldness coming to you. Lift up your hands. Lord, I thank you for our friends that are watching now. I ask you that you will anoint them to be like Joshua, to be like Caleb, to be of a different spirit, and that you will touch your children now with boldness to speak out against the tyranny, against the demonic lies, against the antichrist spirit. And you will anoint them to be leaders like Peter, to take a stand. What's right, what's wrong, what's God, what's Baal. And on this day, choose who you will serve. Will you serve Jehovah, the God of Elisha? Or will you serve Baal, the God, the false deity of Jezebel? Choose this day whom you will serve. Let the Peters arise. And I pray for supernatural boldness for you to rise up and to take a stand and let your voice be heard. God's not done with you yet, Peter. God is not done with you yet. I hope you enjoyed this episode on this series called The Acts of the Holy Spirit. God wants to move, but he moves through people like you and I, ordinary, average people. He moves through people like you and I that have a story of redemption like Peter. Don't dismiss yourself. Do not disqualify yourself. Because God wants to use you. God bless you. Let me know if this word blessed you. What spoke to you. And until next time. Shalom.